guys and welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna to be sharing the books that I read in March and this is actually gonna be more of like a vlog style video because I'm filming this on March 9th so I'm starting this video today and then I'll just kind of update you guys as I finish books so far this month I have read I finished two books and I'm working on another one so before I get too deep into books and forget what some were about I wanted to talk a little bit about it let me know if you like this type of video down below I really want again to incorporate more book related videos because it's something that I've been really passionate about and yeah so let me know if that's something that you guys want to keep seeing so the first book that I read this month in March was The Hating Game so this book is actually going to be a movie, I think fairly soon. I'm super excited to see the movie, although I have to say that a lot of times when I read books and then watch the movie or the show, it's not as good. Like either the book's not as good as what, you know, the movie was or vice versa. So I'm hoping that this is good, although I have to say Lucy Hale is in it, so I have a feeling that it'll be good. And when I was reading this book, knowing that it was coming out as a movie, I had her in my mind as the as the girl Lucy. So I think it'll work out. I'm excited to check it out. But just in case you don't like reading books that are going to be in movies or you know, whatever, then I want to point that out. So The Hating Game is about a girl named Lucy and a guy named Josh. They work together. They're actually both like executive assistants to the co-CEOs, which is a very interesting dynamic by itself. Um, and they, like the title suggests, hate each other. So it's a hater, like hate to love type of book. So obviously eventually they fall in love and you're gonna, you're kind of just seeing, you know, how they go from not liking each other to loving each other and I really loved it. Honestly this book has changed romance books for me. I feel like any book that I read now especially that has that like hate to love is it's gonna be hard to compare to this book. It was so good. Um, in the very beginning of the book the way they describe the girl Lucy and I've kind of gotten this idea from like other people's reviews of the book too it kind of seems a little petty like what they're doing and she's into like some weird stuff at, at the beginning but the book does get better so if you read the first couple of pages and you're like oh this doesn't seem like something that I would like trust me it gets better so I just really loved it I thought they did a good job with doing the hate to love and I don't want to spoil anything but you learn stuff at the very end that just makes you like think like oh it's so sweet. So I think for me, one of the things that I love about the hate to love is that Jason and I kind of had that same dynamic at one point. So we were friends. We were really good friends. I met Jason, my husband, when I was 15. We worked together again, kind of tying into that. I think maybe that's why I like this book so much is because I can kind of relate to how it probably felt working with someone that you hated and then you started to love. But anyway, um, me and Jason started working together. I met him at my first job and we were friends and then we kind of got into this It wasn't even really like an argument. We just Started hating each other. It got very weird working with someone especially because we knew each other so well and then We kind of solved those issues and obviously we started dating It was really interesting because once we started dating it was really weird at work like we were always talking and we got in trouble for talking. Karen, if you're watching this, sorry, in advance, she was our manager. So yeah, we just had that dynamic. Um, a lot of that kind of relates to this book. So I felt like maybe that's why I liked it so much. I definitely rec recommend picking it up. It was really good. Um, yeah, I am definitely gonna probably read this again. Like, you know those movies that you watch over and over again? I have a bunch of those and Jason's like, why are you watching this for the millionth time? I feel like this book is one of those books that like if I'm really needing something really good to read, I'll probably read this again. Next book is actually Get a Life Chloe Brown and I, I'll talk about what this book is about but I have to say that I think I'm a little bit biased about this book just because I went from reading The Hating Game which I loved to reading this and they're both romance and they're both 
love to, or hate to love and I think that was a mistake I should have read something else because again it's hard to live up to that book I just loved it so much so this book is about a girl named Chloe and what is the guy's name I feel like it's something really red um, so th about this girl Chloe and she kind of gets into the situation where sh her life flashes before her eyes and so she's like you know what I have to change what's going on I need to change what I'm doing I need to start living my life obviously get a life Chloe Brown and she moves into this like apartment and the guy who's the like superintendent or I think that's what you call it basically the the person that like fixes things around the place and I think collects rent and stuff like that his name is Red they hate each other and it, again hate to love type of thing I think that's a really common theme in books but I love it so they don't like each other at least they don't think that they like each other and then they start spending time together because he helps her get a life and they start liking each other again I think the hard part with this book is that I shouldn't have read another romance book right after The Hating Game. That was a mistake on my part. But there were a couple of things that I did not like about this book. One, and this is totally like reality. People are sick. People have things that they deal with. But Chloe has fibro fibromyalgia. I think that's how you say it. Um, which she's in pain a lot. And she has like flare ups and stuff like that. And I don't like again I know it's realistic but when I'm reading books I would rather there be some type of like dilemma that can be fixed um, and I think the part of me that's like a mom that just doesn't want someone to be hurting and whatever like I think that just it I don't know I was just sad for her I felt bad that like this was something that she was going to have to live with forever I don't wish that upon anybody and again being a mom I just I feel like it it gets me so strong because I think like that's someone's daughter you know just like if it was my daughter so anyway I didn't really like that that was part of her story although again I know it's super realistic and that's just kind of part of life that people deal with things but I didn't really like that because I just felt so bad for her um and the other thing is between the two people between Chloe and Red there were a lot of like miscommunications and a lot of times while I was reading I'm like can you please just talk like just talk just sit there and like breathe and then talk because that's probably again one of the things that just drives me crazy is if something's going on if you're upset about something just talk about it and I think that was just something that again I just couldn't get past with this book I think I ultimately gave this four stars although I've been kind of like trying to think about it because I will rate the books on Goodreads right away like right after I finish the book based off of my like initial thought and I think I need to like think about them first and then go back and do it so I'm still thinking about this book honestly both books that I've read so far I keep going back and like thinking about them and you know the feeling that you get like after you finish a good book or you finish a movie and you're like you can't get the like characters or like what was going on in the book out of your head I feel like both of those books both of these books have that like I keep thinking about Chloe so anyway again for those couple of reasons it wasn't my favorite um but I am excited to read the other the other two books in the series because um the Brown sisters there are three books so this was the first one so I wanted to start with the first one I know a lot of people really love the second one which is Take a Hint Danny Brown Danny Brown and it's kind of fun because in the book you learn about her sisters so I feel like it was a good way to like get to know them a little bit more before I actually read the other books but anyway I've heard from everybody that has read these books that I've watched videos or whatever a lot of people said this was like their least favorite one or like they liked Danny Brown better so we'll see we'll see how it goes but again those are the two books and I really wish that I would have went to something else before I went to get a life Chloe Brown because I think if I wouldn't have just read The Hating Game my perspective on the book might have been a little bit different I just feel like it's really hard to live up to The Hating Game so now the book that I'm reading I'm just really gonna quickly talk about this one because I'm still reading it so right now I am a hundred pages in and I'm reading People Like Her 
I believe I told you guys if you watched my video where I talked about what books I'm going to read this month I think I talked about this already but let me pull it up really quick because I want to just make sure that I'm um, doing this correct so this crap I don't like how they I wish book of the month would let you click on click on the books and be able to like see what it's about so this is a thriller book um and ooh, interesting so it says good to know unlikable narrator mama jump drama marriage issues and tech world very interesting i wonder unlikable narrator i wonder what that has to do with what they're talking about there but anyway i this is one of my book of the month books and um, this is about a like influencer who has someone basically stalking her and throughout the book like throughout the first hundred pages we're hearing from three different perspectives like the narrator is three different people which might be the reason why it said that it was unlikable so the first one is going to be the girl darn it why do I always forget this I always forget the characters what's her name Emmy her she has a weird name like a first name but I think her nickname is Emmy so Emmy is the influencer Dan is her husband they have two kids and she started this like mommy Instagram account and she honestly did it like hoping to get famous and to be able to make a living off of it which is very interesting hearing that point of view because I feel like I kind of fell into this all I didn't I didn't go into starting a youtube channel like thinking that this would be my job so anyway it was interesting hearing that but you have emmy as a narrator you have dan her husband and it's interesting getting his point of view on everything and then you get this other person which you don't know who this person is but it's the person that is stalking them so guys this book is creepy very very creepy um i yeah it's it's just so weird how one person so okay there's a couple of things i feel like i need to explain a little bit more and i'll definitely explain more in another clip when i go into more details but you're hearing emmy's perspective of like how she became an influencer how much work it is and what she does to make herself seem more likable because i think this is in london um the book is like based out of london and in the instagram world there if you are perfect like you don't get followers so you have to be like perfect perfectly imperfect i think is what she says so she'll have like photographers come to her house and she'll like purposely mess it up even though it was already clean because she won't be relatable if she doesn't which is just funny like i never think about that stuff but anyway it's just funny and then you get dan's perspective and you can tell that like he's just not super comfortable with everything and then this other person's perspective and like very slowly you're understanding more and more why this person is doing what they're doing so it's very interesting getting the three different perspectives and it makes it like feel super creepy if you share stuff online on facebook instagram if you're an influencer if you make videos this video i feel like it changes the way that i think about what i do online and it makes me think like am i sharing information that could potentially bring someone to my home bring them to like macy school you know it's just really creepy to think about that and so i'm super excited to keep reading this i feel like i probably should have started reading this before i started chloe brown just because it would have been a good like place to start over with romance but anyway i'm loving this book so far i'll definitely pop in when i'm done with this book because i'm going to try and update you guys after every book just so it's like clear in my head and I can talk to you guys about it but yeah I'm liking this so much so far okay guys so it is March 11th I finished this book last night it's people like her and I went into a little bit about what this book is about earlier um, and I feel like I can't explain why I dislike this book so much without spoiling something so if you don't want spoilers don't watch this part because I feel like there's no way again I could explain how bad this book was if I don't explain some of the spoilers. So again, it's about a girl, Emmy, who's an influencer and she builds this whole brand. She has like a million followers because of her mommy content. 
and you also hear from her husband Dan and then you hear from the one that's watching her her name I believe is Jill and the whole time you're trying to figure out why this Jill lady is following her, why she's trying to figure out so much information and what she's planning because you can tell she's obviously very upset with Emmy and their family. So come to find out that Emmy the influencer gave Jill's daughter some advice about being a mom and Grace took the advice and it led to her baby dying which is terrible like when they explain that part it's horrible but then the one that's watching her jill wants to get back at her because she blames everything on emmy because of course grace had no like you know she's not her own person she can't make her own decisions everything is emmy's fault and she tries to reenact the way that that happened and she puts this eight week old baby like emmy's newborn baby into a similar situation to kind of reenact it and to have Emmy experience how it feels to wake up and like to experience that. It was horrible to read. Um, being a mom, I feel for both moms. Like I feel bad because I know that would be terrible to wake up to that, like just by co-sleeping and whatever. I mean, everybody's parenting is different. You have to do what works for you. I'm not saying that whatever happened was anybody's fault, but I just don't like how she was trying to get revenge and I don't like how this was about a mommy influencer I feel like it could have been better done if it was just about an influencer by herself doing her own thing getting stalked whatever I don't think that it had to be about a mommy and a family because I feel like that takes to a it takes it to a whole nother level and as a mom I just can't recommend any other moms to read this I feel like it's just terrible like I don't want to hear about kids being in danger. I don't want to hear about someone purposely putting kids in danger. I feel like that's just terrible. I also don't like the way that she, um, I don't like the way that Emmy comes off as an influencer. She is supposedly doing this to be relatable and to help other mommies, but she's lying to everybody. And I don't like that, like, that's what people are going to think about influencers because I personally would never do that. I'm sure I'm sure other people may be similar more to this, you know, mommy vlogging type of thing. Maybe it's different, but I never say anything or give advice that I would not do myself. So I didn't like that aspect of it. The other thing that I didn't like is after the big incident where like the baby and the mom were placed in harm and like this whole thing went down, they went back to being influencers and her husband wrote a book and now they have 2 million followers. And it's like after that traumatic of an experience where your son's life was like you know dangling like you didn't know if he was going to make it why would you continue doing this why would you keep putting your family out there i don't know i just personally did not like this book at all i just i thought the pieces about the family about the kids that was just unnecessary you could have come up with a book about influencers and the risk of being an influencer and all of that without including kids. I feel like that was just, just not what I wanted to read. And the funny thing is, I kind of had an idea that like the, that it was going to be about a mommy influencer just because of the cover, but I didn't know that like the, everything was going to revolve around hurting the kids. I would not have read this book if I knew that. So again, I would not recommend it. I feel like this was, very poorly done in my opinion. I thought that you could have definitely got your point across about about influencers, about the like risk of being an influencer without involving the kids. But maybe that was the point of it. Maybe I'm just being too sensitive and I don't like when things are about kids. I don't know. But I would not recommend this book. I'm definitely going to resell this book because I don't want this anywhere near me. <laughs> I am next because I need something more happy and something more my style. I'm going to read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I did finish Get a Life, Chloe Brown right before I started this one. And I wanted to read something different just so that I could kind of clear my head. I read two like more romance centered books and I just really wanted something that was a little different. And now I am desperately needing something that is more my style, more like happy. Because guys, when I was reading this book, I just felt so on edge and just so anxious for the kids. I don't know. Anyway, I don't recommend that book, but 
I'm gonna start this one. I am pretty busy right now with re or with um, cutting like new stuff for my shop. I do have an Etsy shop, and on Sunday, so today is Thursday. On Sunday, I have my big like monthly release. So I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to be able to read anytime soon. This might this book might take me a while to get through, especially because it is I think close to 400 pages. Um, Ooh, or is this part of, oh, this is a sneak peek of Eve's book. So it really is like 360 pages, but still quite a bit of pages. So I'm going to go ahead and get into work now after I gave you guys that long, <laughs> that long explanation of why you should not read this book. Let me know if you have read this one, what you thought of it. Am I being too sensitive? Did you guys like it? I just, I feel like as a mom, anytime I read stuff about kids, it just, it makes me put my like myself in the mom's position and I think you want to be mean to me you want to do something to me go ahead but do not do it to my kids and I, I get that like the reason why that might be is because another like her granddaughter was involved and like you know I get that but still the poor kid did nothing and like he had no idea what was happening he had no idea why any of this was you know going on I just I can't can't imagine someone doing that to a kid so anyway don't read this book if you're a mom especially do not read this book but I'm gonna go ahead and get into work I hope you guys enjoyed the little brief discussion of this and I have more books to read so I'm gonna keep going hi guys so I know it's been a while it's actually April 2nd right now when I'm filming this video and I were filming this clip. I wanted to just pop in because I finished my last book and that is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Um, so this month has been crazy for us. We have been legit like super busy with house stuff and I'm definitely gonna give you guys an update at some point soon talking about like what's happening. But it was a month of big change for us. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so for, I want to say like two weeks, maybe closer to a week, I honestly just didn't read at all. I felt super overwhelmed. I felt like I could, I couldn't like get into the books because I just had so much going on with my own life. But um, I'm hoping that April is a better reading month for me. I'm not gonna do an April like TBR as they call it, like what I'm planning to read, but I am gonna do a book haul because I have a lot of books and I want to share the ones that I'm gonna kind of choose from to read in April. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about Danny Brown. I'm definitely gonna be popping in and out, changing my machines. Sorry if that's annoying, I just have to film this today and get this done so that I can put it up for you guys tomorrow. So I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and guys, this book was so, so good. You have to read this book. I did read the other one, which was Get a Clue, is it Get a Clue or no, Get a Life. Yeah, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And I have to say this one was so much better. I enjoyed this one a lot more. And I think the reason why I enjoyed it so much more was because I could relate a little bit more to the characters. I liked that like health wasn't a huge factor in this story. And I think for me, like the health aspect just, it makes me like anxious thinking about health issues as it is. Like I've had a lot of family members have health issues. Jason has a heart condition. So I don't really enjoy reading about health issues. Although I know it's definitely relevant to pretty much anybody. Okay, problem fixed. Um, but anyway, if that is something that you don't enjoy reading with books, like health issues, you may not like that other one. This one does deal with loss of loved ones. So if that is something that you don't want to read about, um, if that's something like that's triggering for you, it might not be a good read. I didn't mention, I didn't mind it too much because I feel like they kind of talked about the aftermath. They didn't go too much into the actual loss, but I just figured I'd mention that. This one is up there with the hating game. I loved this book. I'm definitely gonna give it five stars on Goodreads. I really, really, really enjoyed it. There were times where I was like laughing um, from like the banter between the, the two people. This one was definitely more of like a friends to lovers type of um, situation. They also 
They also like did the fake dating thing, which I also really enjoy. A lot of the books that I've read lately have that, and I really enjoyed that. So I really liked this book, and I definitely recommend it if you are like me and you kind of like the like contemporary romance type of thing. Um, I am really excited to read the next one, which is something Eve Brown, Grow Up Eve, Eve Brown, I think that is what it is. There's three books, so I read, this is the second one, I'm gonna read the third one, probably in April, but the next book that I'm gonna read is not going to be a romance because I found that's never good for me. It's never good for the book either. I don't enjoy books um, so much after I get like a great one. So I'm probably gonna read like a mystery or something like that. There's actually a book that's coming from Book of the Month that I am super excited about. So hopefully that gets here soon so I can read that one next because I feel like when you're really excited about it, then it usually ends up being a better read. So I've read four books. I read The Hating Game, Get a Life, or is it Get a Life? Yeah, Get a Life, Eve, no. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Then I read People Like Her, which I mentioned in a clip in this video, but that one, I have never disliked a book so much. That one was a horrible book. I did not like it. I didn't like how they like represented influencers. I didn't like that they brought kids into it. I did not like that book. I will definitely be getting rid of that book. And then this one, Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I also was listening to an audiobook. I was listening to the Southern something flying vampires. It's horrible. I probably could have finished it, but I don't like the book. <laughs> I don't like listening to it. I don't like, you know, I don't like it at all. I don't, I don't like anything about the book and I'm sorry if you like it, but I just don't. And it's funny because the last couple of audiobooks that I've listened to, I did not like. So I'm wondering if I just don't like listening, listening to audiobooks. I'm tempted to try like one of the more like contemporary romance books to see if like it is really that I don't like listening or if it's just I've chosen bad books to listen to. I don't know. But anyway, those are the books that I read this month. Definitely a lower amount because I've been, you know, busy with personal stuff, but I am excited for April and all of the books to come. Definitely check out my April like haul book video. I think it's going to be up maybe next week. Um, at some point because I'm going to kind of talk about listing your Amazon wish list again and I'm going to pick someone to purchase a book for. That worked out so well. I had so many people like say that they love that idea. So many people sharing the books they got in my Facebook group. So I am definitely super excited to do that again in April. So keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you guys read a great book in March. What book was it? Leave it down below so that maybe I can check it out. Um, just so you know, like for the most part, I feel like my, the books that I like to read are like contemporary romance. I don't like the historical thing. It's just not my thing. And then um, I also like like thrillers or mysteries, but definitely more of like the contemporary romance. That's more my thing. I just, I like to, I like, I don't know. I like love, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing the books that I read. I definitely will have my Goodreads and all of that stuff d linked down below if you guys want to check those out. I normally do updates like kind of saying um, like what page I'm on, how like far through the book I am, and I kind of put my rating, but I don't do long descriptions. So if you're wanting to see why I rated a book a certain way, watching these are definitely the best option. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.